Hello, everyone, and welcome to the debut episode of The Gator Chomp. What is The Gator Chomp, you may ask? It is our brand new informational program that will be on our YouTube channel that's going to tell you all about Boshan High School, the latest news on academic programs and athletics. Now, while this first episode of The Gator Chomp was produced by staff members, Ms. Sean Delahousse, Mr. Jonathan Eaglin, and myself, Coach Chad Vidrine, all future episodes of The Gator Chomp will be produced by our digital media students. They will be the ones behind the camera filming or at the computers editing the video or creating graphics for each program. Together with our staff members and our administration, our digital media students will make sure that The Gator Chomp goes off once to twice a month for your informational purposes. So when our students return during the hybrid model, they will be the ones along with our staff and administration to bring you the latest news on all of our academic events, our athletics, and anything to do with our clubs. And so for our very first segment of the debut episode of the Gator Chomp, I'll send it down to Jonathan Eaglin as he stands by and interviews our principal, Ms. Tiffany Etienne. Hey there, Gators. We're here with Tiffany Etienne today, our principal, and we're gonna ask a couple of questions about what exactly hybrid is gonna be like when we return. So Ms. Etienne, I'm glad we're able to get together today six feet apart. Yes, um, <laughs> Or eight feet apart, however. <laughs> and so we're hoping that you can just kind of uh, welcome us into the new year. What are some of the differences? What exactly are we gonna experience when we go back to hybrid? With the hybrid schedule, it would be an AB schedule alternating every other uh, Fridays. Uh, with the A coming on Friday and the following week would be the B coming on uh, that Friday. Okay. How do students know which A or B they are? When will they know that? Uh, they should be known in the next week or uh, by J call and through their email. We will send it out as well as the bus drivers. Uh, the bus drivers will have an in service given by our assistant principal, mm -hmm. Mr. Whaley, and he will go over uh, who, what students will be the A and what uh, bus riders will be B. Okay. So how exactly is lunch going to work? Can you give us an idea of how that's going to work? Uh, definitely. Well, let's start with breakfast. Uh, when the kids get off the bus, they will be temp checked. Uh, once they enter the building, they will proceed, the ones that would like to have breakfast, they're going to walk inside the cafeteria for a grab and go and walk right out and then follow the flow of traffic all the way until they get to their homeroom class and they will have breakfast in class. Uh, when they get for lunch, we will do uh, not the same as breakfast. They will have lunch uh, delivered uh, to the classrooms. Uh, students with special diets, they will already be marked in our uh, cafeteria. Ladies will make sure those students are taken care of as well. Okay. So there will be no sitting in the lunchroom whatsoever? Uh, no sitting in the lunchroom. Only a certain uh, select few students will sit in the lunchroom. And those students will know who they are? Correct. So Ms. Aten, can you also tell us a little bit about how the locker situation is going to work? Lockers this year will not be allowed for the students. They will be able to carry a clear mesh or see-through book sack. What about the pattern of traffic on our campus? Do we have to move in a specific way now? Is that changed? Uh, yes, everybody will move the same way. We will have maps available online for our students to kind of get an idea ahead of time, we will have one single flow of traffic with one roundabout, which will be uh, new and interesting for our kids. Uh, we will have markers on the floors uh, for our students to lead and guide them throughout the uh, halls. So it won't be that dissimilar to a trip to the store where the markers are on the floor allowing us to know which direction to move. Exactly. Well, Miss Etienne, what about the parking situation for our students that drive? Students will be able to drive on campus. Uh, the requirements will be found online of what they need and they can pr uh, prepay ahead. Do the students have to now take their temperature upon entering the building? How will that work? Uh, when the students enter the building, we have a temp machine where they can walk and use their wrists or forehead 
or we have the handheld thermometer. And right now in the bus entrance, we'll probably have the temp machine. It's faster, and uh, I think the kids would appreciate it and enjoy walking through. It is a unique experience. It's, yes. It reminds us of the times we live in. Def unfortunately, indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, so when the students arrive to campus, is there a congregational area or where do you want them to go? Unfortunately, this as for right now, students are, will not be able uh, to meet and socialize uh, before school as normal or at lunch. Uh, they will have to either go directly, pick up a breakfast, a meal, a grab and go, and then walk in the same direction all the way around to their uh, designated homeroom class. So still following the arrows along the floor exactly. to get to homeroom. Okay. And if for some reason their teacher is absent, uh, they will have to report to the auditorium. We will have seating available in a safe uh, spacing for them to uh, sit and go through all the uh, questionnaires uh, as far as who's eating lunch or any uh, materials or items that need to be signed, filled, or uh, given out verbally. How do trade students expect to go through their year? Trade school students, uh, I'm happy to announce that they will still be able to go to trade school and then report back on campus uh, to be uh, with fellow students uh, taking their uh, classes uh, that they scheduled for or assigned, depending upon what was available. So as well, we should expect that the dismissal of the students works a little bit differently now as well? Oh, most definitely. Uh, we will at the time we are working on that plan, but every student, be it uh, a driver, uh, athletes, uh, clubs, or uh, students going home by bus, or, um, or car riders, they will have a specific procedure on how to leave uh, in a, a certain order. So how do students dress for this year? Has the attire changed? How do we want to address that? Uh, yes, the attire did change. I will allow students to wear a spirit shirt, and uh, that being a school-issued uh, shirt. Um, we are about to open a Gator store online. Uh, some students were able to uh, buy items uh, during our orientation, our computer Chromebook pickup, and they were able to purchase some items at a good price. I know the items won't be at the same price that they got them earlier, but we will have items for them to buy online. And they will be able to wear it uh, daily with uniform bottoms. Um, school uniform is the same as last year. That is the only change. They will be able to wear a spirit shirt. That's actually kind of neat. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Was that something that like the whole parish did, Miss Atien? No, I got it from uh, my kids go to Leonville Elementary and they get to wear spirit shirts. And I thought it was a good idea. Uh, the kids love it. And um, some prefer it than a, a collared shirt. And uh, it's very comfortable. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. Many of our students enjoy going to the vending machines or getting water cokes from those machines. Hasn't that changed this year? It did change. Right now, students are not allowed to use uh, all the water fountains. We do have uh, special water fountains that uh, you can fill up water bottles. So they will be able to bring a water bottle um, for them to be able to get that water they need. We prefer the water bottle to be clear, um, just for safety reasons. Uh, that would be the only items that we uh, liquid that we want on campus. We appreciate you answering some questions today. We hope that this absolutely alleviates confusion on the parental end of things. So once again, thank you for being here. Well, thank you. I enjoyed the uh, questions. Um, I look forward to doing this, but once uh, every two weeks. Yes. Oh, I love it. And if y'all have questions for us or any of our staff members, please don't hesitate. Uh, shoot us an email uh, or give us a call. Uh, I think this is something great where we could reach out to the community and all our students. Uh, I'm excited about the new year. Uh, we have plenty of things in store. Uh, and all we need is your support 
Uh, just know that we're working hard for our kids, our students. Uh, we love y'all, miss y'all, can't wait till y'all back on campus. Go Gators! Coming up next on the Gator Chomp, Miss Della Husse interviews volleyball coach Thad Dickey about the upcoming season. Over the last few seasons, under the direction of Coach Thad Dickey, the Lady Gator volleyball team has been on a run of success. Earlier today, we had a chance to sit with Coach and speak to him about the effect that the COVID shutdown has had on his program. Yeah, uh, we, we had to deal with the COVID situation this summer. Um, it hit us pretty good. Um, no one understands uh, what we deal with unless you are a coach. Um, a lot of trials and tribulations when you come into scheduling and knowing that you can only have a certain amount of kids in the gym. Um, we could only work out a few girls at a time. Um, the weight room was disrupted, our training was disrupted, but the girls worked hard. Uh, we managed to make it work. Um, with, with the COVID, we ended up having to stay a little extra long time at practices. We had to do more uh, scheduling. Uh, we had to bring in three different groups uh, for all our conditioning and uh, court time. 
Uh, we had to separate them between our varsity, JV, and freshmen, basically. And with the limit that the CDC and the guidelines have placed on us, uh, we had to do extra mitigation efforts to make sure safety for our kids were the number one priority. Uh, then try to start implementing our philosophy as far as our uh, volleyball sport goes. And we also had to go ahead and try to have some type of uh, unity being done between the girls. Um, it's hard when you have three different groups to come in and you have to try to find rep times for everybody and give everybody the attention that they deserve on the court. Uh, but we made it work. Uh, we had some team bonding issues that we uh, put in and kind of helped us through the summer. Um, and it, it all kind of fell into place uh, once we started moving toward our regular season date. Once the LHSAA decided that the season would go on, the volleyball team faced the challenge of navigating through the COVID restrictions while preparing for the upcoming season. March 13th was a day that <laughs> we'll never forget as far as coaches and sports. Uh, that was the day that we were told that LHSA, the governor, and so forth had to cancel all uh, spring sports. That affected us with volleyball, with tryouts, um, but when we found out as we got closer to August that we would probably get ready to potentially take our steps foot on the court, um, it all kind of fell into place. The girls got really excited. Uh, we found out that we still had to be limited with the numbers that we bring on the court. So we treated it like we did our summer program. Uh, we had uh, double practices. Uh, we came in at uh, 6.15 every morning uh, throughout the summer and closer toward the season start date of in August. Uh, we got here at 6.30 or so and got our varsity and part of the JV work. And then two hours later, we would bring in another group and we'll work with JV and freshmen for practices. Uh, I brought in uh, my three assistant coaches, Coach Malone, Coach Bado, and Coach Lauren Manuel to uh, help me. Uh, we all worked together this summer, uh, putting our plan in uh, to make sure everything is kind of followed the way we want it done. And as we got closer to that start date, uh, we started seeing pieces come together. Uh, we saw the kids growing up. We saw the kids start playing together. Uh, we saw them start kind of unifying themselves, uh, holding each other accountable. Uh, we, we also looked at uh, separating the teams and try to have a third practice uh, for the young girls just because they needed the extra work. So we had a few freshman practices alone, but I'm fortunate enough to say that along with myself and the three assistant coaches, we've got 32 girls on our team. Uh, we dress out 15 girls for varsity and we split up the JV and the freshmen so they can have teams. Uh, we have about a 31 game schedule for varsity and JV. I had a 16 game schedule for freshmen. Um, so we're looking forward to the start of the season. Uh, we're looking forward to great things for our Lady Gator volleyball team. Uh, we're trying to set a standard. We're trying to change the culture. Um, when we first took it over, uh, we won 17 games. Uh, the, my second year, we won 18 games. Uh, this year, anticipation is high. We've got a solid group of girls, and expectations are to get more wins than that and get deeper into the playoffs. Lady Gators are currently 12-0 and and looking to take the program to new heights. Yeah, we, uh, we're, we're playing really well right now. We're, we've got some big wins under our belt. Uh, the girls are playing extremely well. Um, our freshmen came out, and they've had... Uh, couple of good games they got to play a little bit uh, with their schedule we ended up having to change the schedule a little bit because of the uh, COVID a lot of teams had to drop freshmen but we kept our schedule but we had to reduce the number of games and we had planned on trying to get about 14 to 16 games with them now it looks like they're gonna get about 9 or 10 games 
Uh, the JV is going to probably play close to 30 games. Uh, the varsity is going to have right around 30 games. But with the hurricane that just came through, uh, we're losing a couple of games because of uh, students being displaced all over the state and out of the state. And um, we're, we're making our schedule work. Getting back to the girls, they are playing fabulous. Um, a lot of great wins. Um, they've improved every single night. Uh, we're very fortunate to have four seniors that have been leading our group. Uh, they start off uh, pretty much numerical number. Number four, Caitlin Dickey. Number seven, Ashlyn Head. Number eight, Cameron Turnich. And number 18, Sonny Green. Those four seniors are setting the standard for us. They're leading by example. They are holding people accountable. Um, they're, they're, they're bringing their lunch pail to work every day. Uh, couldn't be any prouder of them. Then we've got a few girls that popping in. We have Morgan Mills, who's a junior, uh, as a setter. We have Elise Ryder, who is playing great in the middle. And we also have another key ball player, number 21, Chloe Bonvalet. Chloe's uh, a sophomore that has been really working hard and good things are coming for her. We have um, a few fill-ins. We have Lily Doucette, who's a junior, they're working around the front row. Uh, we also have Morgan Swallow, who's working some back row for us. Uh, we've kind of put in some different people. Uh, we've got some freshmen getting in some work. Um, so we're trying to give a lot of kids a lot of playing time early, right now, early in the season, to get some more experience to get us through the latter part of the season and to the playoffs. So the girls were playing great.
2019 edition of the Beauchamp Gator football team faced a very challenging season last year. Just one week before practice was to begin, the head coach was gone. The Gators were left shorthanded with a skeleton crew for a coaching staff and an interim head coach by the name of Sal DC. The Gators, despite fighting hard, finished with a 1-9 record. Fast forward to February 2020, Coach DC is named permanent athletic director and head football coach. However, just a couple weeks after being named into his new position, the COVID-19 virus shuts the whole world down and the football team is left in limbo as to knowing what's next. We caught up with Coach DC to ask him just how his program dealt with the COVID shutdown and all the restrictions. Uh, yes, whenever COVID uh, and the news came out on March 13th that everything was suspended for the rest of the uh, spring, you know, we were kind of in, in limbo and didn't know what was going to happen. And then LHSA is going to decide for summer workouts to happen and then comes with all these guidelines. And we had people in place and we had enough things in place and we got stuff ordered and, and kind of, I'd say, uh, kind of led the way in St. Landry Parish with protocols and mitigations on what to do and how to keep kids safe along with LHSA guidance and Louisiana Athletic Care guidance. Um, kids were apprehensive, uh, kind of like, you know, kind of worried. We did have some, some parents who were worried, but I think their fear subsided when they could trust us that we were going to follow protocols and do our best. Uh, summertime was also the, the not knowing if we were going to have a season. With all the uncertainty surrounding the season, it was left in limbo as so to whether the season would even happen or not. Thankfully, the LHSA finally came out and decided that football would take place. Starting on the week of October 1st and 2nd, football teams would play an eight-game regular season and then a full playoffs. We asked Coach DC how the good news affected the team. Since, uh, since we weren't having a season, it's kind of hard to motivate these guys for an, an unknown future. But I think they held steadfast, uh, had 40 plus uh, I had workouts in the summer and it, I think that's a, a vast improvement of what, uh, what we've seen in the past. Um, go through fall practice, uh, like I say, says we're going to start fall practice at normal time, and, but with no shoulder pads uh, and no, not full gear, um, still following the, the guidelines and mitigation plan, uh, still uncertainty. And then we roll around a few weeks ago and the LHSA decides that we're going to have a season. And you, you see a little energy from the, the students that uh, it's finally going to happen. Although abbreviated, but it's going to happen. They're going to get a chance to play. With all the restrictions with COVID, fans, the gate, the attendance restrictions, Coach DC had a few words to say about what to expect for this upcoming season season outlook you know it looks promising we can keep everybody healthy we can keep everybody healthy everybody on the same page everybody to align the sign and know their responsibility i think we're going to be okay i think we're going to see some positive results you know you're going to see exciting exciting football based on what you saw from the offense last year and most of those guys returning will be back defensively most of those guys are returning and, and coming back uh our expectations uh are to start one and oh it's it's our vision statement start one and oh make the playoffs uh play on Thanksgiving, I mean, win the first playoff game in school history, uh, play on Thanksgiving and, uh, and win a state championship. That's, that's our business statement. That's where we hope to be at the end of the season. Due to our, uh, the pandemic and the fact that 25% capacity is what we can hold as of now, we are strongly encouraging online sales of our tickets. How would you do that? You would go to the St. Landry Parish School website find Beauchene High School or just Google Beauchene High School directly. At the bottom of our homepage for, Bo for Beauchene, you will see a store tab. Go ahead and click that and you would find the game of your choice. There will be a Gator, uh, Gator Head logo with Beauchene underneath. You'll find that game. Uh, the, you, will purchase, you, or you can purchase adult tickets through that site. Uh, we strongly encourage it to help lines go a lot faster. Uh, especially since we have to do temp checks on everyone that walks in. Child tickets can still be purchased at the gate. Away games will be based up to the school's discretion on how they want to do it. Our first away game is Thursday, October 1st at Pine Prairie. And they are only doing online sales of tickets and we are only allotted 168 of those. 
So once they sell out 168 visitor tickets, that is it. Home games, we can fit, uh, according to 25% capacity, 70, uh, 704 at capacity. We have plenty of room. We'd like you to get in there early, get a seat that's comfortable since they will be spaced out and we, we suggest that you socially distance and mask up. Thank you very much, Gator Nation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the office at 662-5815. Thank you very much, Gator Nation, and go Big Blue. For less than a week before the first game of the season, Coach DC has a message for all the fans and community from Beauchamp. Hello, Gator Nation. I'm Coach DC, a football coach and athletic director at Beauchamp High School. We want to invite you to come out and support our Gators this football season in the Swamp on Friday nights. We ask that you help us row the boat. What does row the boat mean? Row the boat is our never give up attitude. These student athletes work extremely hard to represent you as a community. So if you come out there and row with us and never give up with us as a school, as, a, as an athletic program, we will appreciate all your support. Thank you very much and go Big Blue. Well, this concludes our first ever episode of the Gator Chomp. For the latest and greatest information about Beauchamp High School, visit our social media sites. And until next time, we'll see you at the Swamp.